Do you have another cover story about Madame Chong in Time magazine? And Harry would take up the cudgels, and there would be another cover story, quite a shameless one in Time magazine. But they were Confucians. And for Harry, a Confucian meant a sort of second-grade Presbyterian. Not quite in the charmed circle, but okay. And they'd get there. Luce's hopes for a new China were shattered after World War II when civil war broke out between the Guomindang and the communists. We remained committed to Chang, ignoring the support Mao had from the Chinese people. In 1949, Chang and the remnants of his army fled to the offshore island of Formosa. The communists controlled China. And in Tiananmen Square, Mao declared the birth of the People's Republic. A few months later, Mao met Stalin in Moscow and signed a friendship treaty. Once again, the American image of the Chinese changed. Heroes and allies during the war, they were now puppets of Stalin, godless communists. In protest, we refused to recognize Red China. It was not a puppet state created by Stalin. This was a Chinese indigenous national communist revolution that had succeeded, and it was our business to stay in touch with them. There were times in 1949, 1950, when we could have done as the British did, and not sever relations with China, keep up the dialogue. Even in our worst years with Stalin, we kept up the dialogue. Would a diplomatic dialogue have made a difference? Professor Arthur Waldron believed the Chinese had their own internal reasons for avoiding contact. They felt that the, that the illness from which China suffered was precisely contact with the United States and other Western countries, and they believed that the capitalist and free market systems were doomed. Uh, they, and that, that, that to build a better China, one that was be better for all of the people there, meant following the communist uh, program. And that's what they did. Uh, they sincerely tried to put this into effect, and that meant uh, breaking relations with Western countries, uh, throwing out foreign business, uh, confiscating private assets, uh, getting rid of people who were thought of as counter-revolutionaries. I think that it all follows from their beliefs. We shall create a vast sea of humanity and drown the enemy in it. Despite the threatening rhetoric, service and other China hands who were there during the war believed there was a historic lost chance. If America had not isolated China, it might have avoided future crises in the Pacific. We didn't have any people in China. We cut ourselves off. Uh, this resulted in a classic misinterpretation of events around the Korean War. Korea, the little nation that was divided at the 38th parallel to placate Russia, becoming the scene of a new communist crime against humanity. In 1950, the communist North invaded the South, and the United States, under the UN flag, fought to stop the takeover. China warned that it would enter the war if its border with North Korea was threatened. Without diplomatic contact, the message did not get through, and a war that might have been contained expanded. We assumed that the Chinese were in on the, in on the invasion, invasion, that it was all a part of a worldwide communist conspiracy and so on. The Chinese sent signals to us not to send American troops to the Yalu River. We ignored them. We didn't believe them because they came through an Indian diplomat that we thought was too friendly and so on. But it was a, a complete uh, misunderstanding and misapprehension on both sides because we were completely cut off. Twenty-five thousand Americans and almost a million Chinese died in a war that lasted three years and ended in a stalemate. The but the image of red hordes threatening to take over Asia was fixed in the American mind. We had invested so much, expecting the sleeping giant to awaken and join our camp. We felt betrayed. Washington didn't ask whether there was a lost chance in China. Instead, it demanded to know who lost China? The State Department had in China a young man named John S. Service. His task, obviously, was not to work for the communization of China. Strangely, however, he sent official reports back to the State Department. 
urging that we torpedo our ally, Chiang Kai-shek, and stating, in effect, that communism was the best hope of China. Senator Joseph McCarthy blamed the loss of China on service and others in the State Department who had advised aid to Mao during the war. Service was fired, and after years of legal battles, the Supreme Court finally vindicated him and ordered the State Department to rehire him. But for years, McCarthy's witch hunts purged everyone from the State Department who was contaminated by their expert knowledge of communist China. The witch hunt was supported by Chang's wealthy backers in the U.S., the powerful China lobby. Harry Luce was the heart and soul of the China lobby. It coincided with the rise of Joe McCarthy, the whole phenomenon of McCarthyism, this idiot anti-communism that ran through the country, and they piped right in on it. After all, we lost China. We lost China. That's terrible, says the average American reader. How do we lose it? Communists. Of course, I might have known. Meanwhile in China, Mao unleashed his own massive ideological purges, starting in the late 1950s. It started out with a series of campaigns in which millions of people were arrested and killed. It then went in to mass collectivization in which more people were killed and it ended in an absolutely appalling famine in which something like 20 or 30 or more million people starved to death essentially for reasons of government policy. Uh, this was not a regime with which it would have been very easy to do business even if we had been entirely agreed ourselves that that was what we wanted to do. China's internal conflict only confirmed America's convictions about the nature of communism. Our mission was to contain the spread. In 1954, convinced that the Chinese were behind Ho Chi Minh's nationalist revolution, we began our fateful involvement in Vietnam. The CIA ran a disinformation campaign against the Chinese to win support for American policy in Vietnam. I had a contact who was a journalist, so I had him plant this story. Troop ships and supply ships of Chinese origin have been sighted on their way to Haiphong. So this then got into the international wire service and spread the idea that we wanted spread around the world that when in the post-Geneva conference period everybody hoped that the Vietnamese situation was settled, we were saying, no it isn't, it isn't settled because the Chinese communists are the main supporters and although we had no evidence of that, it this was true. We wanted people to think that. Chiang Kai-shek and Madame Chiang lead observances of the nation's 11th year on Formosa and the 49th anniversary of the Republic of China. United States policy promoted another fiction about China, that it was vulnerable to an overthrow by Chiang's forces on Taiwan. While Chiang set up a repressive regime killing thousands of opposition leaders, the China lobby lionized him as a Democrat the man who would win back China. Harry Luce did probably one of the world's great public relations jobs on Chiang Kai-shek. A ruthless, humorless, uh, wrong way ideologue who loved power. This man emerged in some of Harry Luce's cover stories as a pious, God-fearing Christian a real born-again Democrat. Harry Luce probably set back the, the, the future of U.S.-Chinese relations by around 10 or 15 years. Washington's stubborn commitment to Chiang blinded it to the looming split between China and the Soviet Union. Despite all the public posing of solidarity, tensions that had always existed between the Chinese and the Russians finally broke into the open in 1959. Instead of seizing the opening to deal with Mao, the White House persisted in viewing China as part of a monolithic communist conspiracy. But these people who say that uh, we ought to withdraw from Vietnam are wholly wrong because if we withdrew from Vietnam, the communists would control Vietnam. Pretty soon Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Malaya would go and all of Southeast Asia would be under the control of the communists and under the domination of the Chinese. The domino theory led us deeper and deeper into the jungles of Vietnam. 